Okay. All right. Um, all right, Amrish uh, Baliga is also joining us this afternoon. Amrish, uh, look at the kind of cuts we are seeing today in the markets. Uh, right. Is this? Uh, it, I mean, it seems somewhat unprecedented given that we haven't actually seen any kind of action coming in from the uh, RBI's meet. Are you surprised at all, or were you expecting this? I know in fact uh, we are not expecting too much of an action from RBI uh, bas basically because they have already taken action outside the policy and it doesn't stop them from taking action even going ahead outside the policy and in case you see the rupee still uh, depreciating further I and mean, the way it has come uh, come off today in case you see the rupee uh, I mean, moving more towards 61, half 62 I suppose you will again see action from uh, like RBI I mean uh, like outside the policy and uh, if you are talking about the index I mean, uh, like uh, we've been maintaining that uh, the index has been artificially held up just by those eight, ten stocks uh, for for uh, like quite a while. And if you look at the rest of the markets, I mean, uh, uh, like it is as if the index is closer to 3,000, levels. I mean, if you look at the mid caps and a number of other stocks, I think uh, most of the portf I mean, portfolios are bleeding. And uh, clearly, the Nifty is not really showing you the right picture. And I suppose uh, it has to correct to show you the correct picture and, uh, and the way uh, things are. I clearly see it uh, moving more towards the 5100 levels. Okay, Amit, you know, one of the stocks I have to get your call on is BPCL or the oil and gas market. Just look at the kind of cuts we're seeing there today. 8%, I mean, we can still understand on the counters that have run up and are, are taking a bit of a beating, but uh, what justifies this 8.5% down on a BPCL? It's, it's actually not just BPCL, the mm. entire oil and gas exactly. market. Even ONGC, if you could just get those stocks up, Reliance for that matter. Yeah. All these stocks are down. Yeah, I think that's predominantly to do with uh, currencies. Uh, Movement that is concern uh, on that front. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's a BPCL for you. I'm really sure. Were you also looking at Dr. Reddy's and the the numbers and the impact post that? Absolutely disappointing, no doubt, yeah. uh, because uh, like Dr. Reddy was surely one of those stocks which are there on our uh, radar, and uh, we have suggested people to buy it. Uh, I mean, this was uh, anyway. I mean, way back when it was 1650s, uh, like 1700 levels, but we still had hopes on Dr. Reddy's. And the other two stocks which we are suggesting was Sun Pharma and Lupin. But now with the set of results which have come for uh, like Dr. Eddy, I think uh, we should see a decent correction, I think more towards those 2000 levels. Speaking of results, Amrish, tomorrow is Bharti Day. What are you expecting? Uh, Bharti again, uh, I mean, uh, we, are, I mean, we are not extremely positive at this sort of time uh, on telecom and especially Bharti. We clearly see those margin pressures uh, I mean, uh, like showing up on uh, this company. Uh, so, I mean, uh, even at these levels, I would suggest that it's possibly time to book out to a certain extent. Right. Even if we take a look at the metal pack today, we're down about 2.5% the metal index, 4% on the oil and gas index, and uh, about 2.5% on the, on the metals front, power, PSU, some of the other uh, pockets of the market which are looking incredibly weak. Hindalco is one, uh, Amit, that has actually been uh, seeing a bit of a beating in the last, consecutive, last few consecutive sessions now. Yeah. What's your call there? Yeah, so if you look at Hindalco and just to do a correlation uh, with uh, Tata Steel, Hindalco was at around 95, 97 levels when Tata Steel was at around uh, 300 levels. And from there, uh, Tata Steel has fallen to around 210, predominantly because of what is happening with respect to China's slowdown, which is impacting metals and uh, metal stocks that we have. So Hindalco has still not fallen to that extent. It's at around 85, 87 kind of levels. So there is uh, some potential more for the stock to fall from here on. Just to go back very quickly to oil and gas, what we were just discussing, yeah. any specific call on an ONGC or what would you do with the Reliance now, which is again back below 900? Yeah, so Reliance, if you look at it, predominantly had uh, risen all the way because of the gas pricing that had come out. And it had taken the market all the way up all to the way, this yeah, level of 6100 yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, there's an interesting point on market, uh, which I'll just come to. But uh, if you look at Reliance in general at around 880 levels, uh, I think uh, we would, uh, from a trading initiative, you may like to just hold on as it moves closer to 830, 840. That's where you may like to go long on the stock for a target of uh, 900. Okay, it looks like the governor is going to begin uh, speaking soon. They're just going to be getting settled. I'm really sure, you know, just while that's happening, a final call from you on really where you expect the markets to settle from here on. We're trading about the 5700 mark. Is this what you see as fair valuation? Not really. I mean, uh, like I've uh, been maintaining that the valuations are uh, still quite high, and I suppose the first stop for the market will be, I think, more uh, towards the 5500 levels. And uh, once it goes to those levels, maybe we can really, uh, I mean, look at the future course of action at that kind of time. But as a, I mean, uh, as of now, it's be, uh, like best 
uh, is to uh, basically stay out of the market, not really think of uh, I mean, catching a falling knife. So I think it's best to stay out and hold on to cash. Okay. All right. Let's listen in to the RBI governor. <laughs> 